What is up guys, Fahir here from AwesomeDudes.com and now that we have or we are spawning our levels, so we are spawning these small bricks that our cat can jump on but we don't have the cat to jump on the bricks, so let's create a cat but before that go here if you are interested, AwesomeDudes.com, link is in the description below if you are interested in 3D game development, this is my newest course, my best course so far. The explanations are just amazing. People are very delighted with the course, so definitely go and check it out. If you want higher discounts, go and join my mailing list. And in order to join them, you can download this project along with all of the assets that I am using in this project. And the link is in the description below. Anyways, moving forward, I am gonna go into the models and here we have the cat model which I'm gonna drag and drop here and voila, here he is. So this is the cat model. This is he and yeah, we're done and there's nothing else to it. I'm just kidding. But what we wanna do is we are gonna go here and for the cat's material, I am gonna go into our matcap vertex textured multiply and it is set to well the cat so the first texture is set here to the cat the second texture i'm gonna go here and set it at tune so simply type tune and we have this matte cap tune and we have tune two three tune plastic we are going to choose tune soft actually so i want to choose tune soft and let me just select the directional light and if i point it can I see actually where it is pointing? No, for some reason, no. Anyways, it's not important, but I have here the cat and I'm gonna say here cat child. So this game object, I'm gonna name it as cat child. One other thing that we also need to do is if you select the cat, you will see that it has automatically an animator attached on it. So the animator is the component for animation and it is attached on the cat. So we need to take this cat animation controller it is set here as you can see inside of the models right below the cat this is the animation controller so click on it and now drag it here into the empty field where it says controller for the animator so simply drag it there and attach it on this cat so the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a parent object for the cat and that's why i named this cat cat child so let me just go here, select the cat and set the position at zero, zero because we will change the position on the parent game object. So I'm going to create an empty game object, which was well created as a child of the cat, but we don't want that. So I'm going to take the game object and I'm simply going to name it cat and put the cat child as well, the child of that game object. So now I'm first going to position it and I'm going to position it 1.18 for the Y and on the Z I'm going to position it negative 3 so that the cat is standing on the little platform. But as we can see, it's not standing. We will fix that in a second. Do not worry because notice the cat is a little big in comparison to the platform. So I'm going to take the scale of the parent, which means that when we scale the parent, the child game objects will also scale along with it. So I'm going to take the parent, set it at 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. This is for the X, Y, and Z. And now we need to add a couple of components onto this game object. The first one being the box collider, the next one being the rigid body, the third one being the audio source, so audio source. Inside of the audio source, uncheck this play on awake because we don't want it to play on awake. And for the audio clip on this audio source, we are going to click on the little circle and we are going to select the cat jump clip. So select the cat jump. Again, click the little circle here and select the cat jump. You can also go here into the sounds, select the cat here and then drag and drop the cat jump, not cat die. Let me just select the cat again, cat jump and put it here. Uncheck play on awake. This is really important. For the rigid body, we are gonna freeze the constraints, so rotations, X, Y, and Z, and freeze the position on the X, Z, and don't freeze the position on the Y. So that's the only position we do not want to freeze. 
Regarding the box collider, he is positioned, as you can see right here. If I run the game now, we are going to have some complications, as you can see. So if I go here, notice the complications that we have. Because of the animation, now don't blame me, this is not my fault, because the animation here is, well, the guilty one. So if I select the cat child here and go into the animator, this ready animation is set in that way. So the ready animation is set in that way so the cat will float like this here. In order to fix that, we need to, well, put the collider a little bit above. So not here where he currently is, but we need to put him a little bit above. So select the box collider, actually select the parent cat game object and go into the box collider and now we have these well options here so we can set it to be a trigger we can set it or change the center change the size and whatnot so i want to set the center at 0.51 and i want to set the size on the z-axis at 112 and that is that so simply set the y-axis center at 0.51 and the Z axis for the size at 112. If I run the game now, because of the rigid body, the cat will fall down as we can see. And now the cat is standing directly on the platform. So as I said, this is the fault of the animation. Don't blame me. I got this assets from a fellow developer. So uh, yeah, nothing I can do about it. The next thing that we need to do is we need to Create a script for the cat. So go into the scripts folder, right click and create a new folder, which I'm going to call cat scripts. Inside of this folder, right click and create a new C sharp script, which is going to be the cat movement. And we need to drag and drop the cat movement on the cat parent game object. Also, we are going to go into the prefabs and drag and drop the cat along with its parent. So the whole cat with the parent, drag and drop it as a prefab right here into the prefabs folder. <clears throat> now I'm going to double click on the cat script and open it here. Tag the class as always. You are already used to my shenanigans. And what am I doing here? So we need, as always, a couple of variables. We need a private float, which is going to be speed, which is 0.3f. And here I'm going to say serialize field because we will be able to change them. And we are also going to have the height. So that is equal to 0.5f. We also need a block manager. So private block manager, block manager, this is how I'm going to name it. And we will see in a second for what we're going to use the speed and the height because, well, Obviously, we're going to use them to move the cat. So we have the private block manager. And the reason for it is because we need to inform the block manager, which is the game object that the cat landed on. So the cat landed block. Well, we need the game or block manager for that. So moving forward from the block manager, we need a serialized field, which is going to be a private audio clip, which is going to be cat die clip. This is the clip that we want to play when the cat dies. We also need a private audio source, so audio source, which I'm going to call audio manager. And we need an array list. So array list, key array, and it's going to be equal to new array list. Now, I'm not sure if I did a tutorial where I talked about an array list. But arrays are like, or actually array list. Array lists are like arrays, except they are resizable. I think I have a tutorial talking about lists. So lists are similar to array lists. Anyway, just follow along. Don't worry. They are like arrays. So you can use indexes to access elements, but you can expand on them. You can add elements to an array list, but you cannot add elements to an a regular array. And you can remove elements from the array list, which you cannot, or actually you can remove them from an array, but that's a different, well, a different method of removing. Anyways, I don't want to talk about that. Just follow along and everything will be clear. Here we will need a private boolean. So private bool is that to indicate if the cat is dead or not. And we will need here a private game object. So private game object. This is not object, 
object. This is going to be water fx, but we are going to handle this one later on. That's why I set him or declared him as a comment. So moving forward inside of the awake, we will get ourselves references to all of the variables that we declared here. First of all, we need the block manager, which is going to be equal to game object dot find. Now this is important. And every time I say this, if you want to find a game object that's in the scene, so select it, copy the name. This is the best way to do it because that way you will make sure that you will not make a mistake and paste the name here. Because if the name here does not match with the name of the game object you gave him here in the hierarchy, it will not work. Ignore the error that you see here because we need to get the block manager script, which is actually a component and not the game object. So we need to say here, get component block manager. So we need to get the component and now everything is okay. Again, I will repeat that if the names don't match here and the name of your game object you are trying to get is not the same as, well, this one right here, it will not work. And you will wonder why is it not working? God, please help me. What am I doing? And whatnot. So the first things first is check the name. Next thing, I'm going to get the animation or actually I did not declare the animator. So we need to declare it. I'm going to declare him here as a private animator and I'm going to say anim. Now the animator component is we can see is not attached on the cat parent game object himself is actually attached on the cat child game object. So instead of doing this, instead of doing anim is equal to get component passing here, the animator component, we are going to do this. So we're going to say get component in children. So get the component in the children. It's in the child game object. It's not on the parent. As you can see, select the cat, which is the parent game object. It has a box collider. It has a rigid body, audio source and the script, but it does not have the animator component. The animator is attached on the cat itself. So as you can see here, cat child has the animator component attached on him. So simply say get component in children. It will filter every game object and it will get the animator. So get the component that's in the child game object, which is well, the animator. And for the audio manager is equal to get component audio source. I wanted to type audio manager, but then I was like, his name is not audio manager. This is how I named him. We also need to import the DG tweening. So here I'm going to say using DG dot tweening. Now this is a plugin that we have imported. If I go back here, we have imported this DO tween this right here. So you can read it and whatnot. Anyways, this is for the movement. So it will allow us to do some movement with the transform with a couple of lines of code later on. So later on here, we will code the water FX, but we will do that later as I just mentioned here. So here we are going to see void start. And since we imported this DG tweening, which as I said, is going to help us move the game object. We need to activate it and it goes like this dot tween. So D O tween dot in it. And as you can see here, when I type this in it, you can read what it is. So it must be called once before the first ever dot tween call reference. Otherwise it will be called automatically. It will use the default options. As you can see, we have these options here, recycle all by default, user save and log behavior. So here we are going to type a couple of variables or these parameters. So the first one is going to be false. The second one is going to be true. So use the save mode. And for the log behavior, we're going to say log behavior dot errors only. So it will log out in the console if we get any errors. So now we are going to create a function that's going to check the input for our user. And we're going to store the input in the array list. So array list or key array. So here I am going to say void check input. And here we're simply going to say if input, so input dot get key down is equal to key code dot up arrow. So if it's equal to the key code up arrow, we are simply going to add that. So we are going to take our key array and we're going to say dot 
add. And here we are simply going to add a key code, key code that up arrow. We are going to store that in our key array and we will see in a second why. And actually here I can simply remove these curly brackets because we only have one statement below the if statement and copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, because we are going to get the down arrow. And here also we're going to say down here. We're going to get the right one. So right arrow and also here, right. And here we're going to get the left arrow. So left arrow, copy and paste. Now regarding copying and pasting, make sure that when you change the variable here, so you change it to, well, key code up arrow, make sure that you also change it here, because if you did not change it, then you will get problems here. Down arrow, make sure this one is also down arrow, right arrow. This one is also right arrow. So make sure that you also change all the relevant codes that you need to change or otherwise you will have errors. This is a problem when you try to copy and paste things, people forget this. So you want to change this code, but you want to copy and paste it like this. And maybe you say here, key code a, but you forgot to put key code, key code a here. And that's the problem. So make sure that you check or double or triple or hundred check that. Moving forward, now that we have all of this here, so we are storing these keys into the key array. So we are going to check here if key array dot count is greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero it means that we added elements inside of it. And as you can see here, these are the elements that we are adding. So an array list is also different from an array that we can store any object or any variable inside of an array list. This is different because an array, you must declare, for example, an array of booleans and you can only store booleans inside of that array. If you try to store a string, it will not work. But for this one, so key array or actually array list, you can store booleans, you can store strings, integers all at once, and it will work. This is one of the differences between them. And you check how many elements the array has by, by using array name that length, but for the array list you use the name of the array list dot count. This will return how many elements we have in the array. If we added one of these elements here, that means we have greater than zero. So we have one. So here we're going to code, we're going to call here, move the cat. This is the function is going to move the cat, which I'm going to create right here below. So void move cat, but we're going to code it in a second. And after we move the cat, we're simply going to call the key array dot remove at. So remove the element at index zero. So do you see now the pattern that I've created here? So the pattern is the following. We are using the key array, which is this one right here. And that's the array where we are storing these inputs. So we will have key code up, we will have key code down, key code right, key code left. And after we add that into the array. We are going to check if the array has elements, which will be true if we add one of these. And then we will move the cat and then we will remove that element so that the next time array is empty and we can start from beginning. So this is the wisdom behind it. And here for the check input, we are going to call that in the update function. But in order to call it, we need to do the following. We need to check if the cat is not dead and if the block manager that cat landed on block is not equal to null. Now the reason for it, and here we are going to call check input. The reason for it, we will not be able to move if the block, this one right here, the cat did not land on it. And we are going to check that here in void on collision enter, which takes a collision as a parameter, which I'm going to call target as always. And we're going to check if Target dot game object dot name is equal to block. This is the reason I said that we need to change the block names here, the block names, the blocks name here to block. Previously it was set to block one. If we set it to block one, the code here will not work. So we need to set it to block. And that's also the reason why we are well, naming every block here as the block. Now, of course, this is one of the solutions. You can use the tags. 
you can simply tag these. So you can go into the prefabs, select the blocks, create here a tag and tag them. Now, before you even ask me, so why did you do it like this? Just to show you that there are multiple ways to do things. There is not only one way that you are gonna use every single time. So I'm showing you that you can do it with multiple ways. And if we have collided with the game object that has this name, we're simply gonna call the block manager dot cat landed on block is equal to target dot game object. This is gonna set it and that's why it's also set here to be public. So that way we will know because well, later on here when we want to instantiate new blocks, we will use this variable. So we will use this variable to get rid of the previous block. Now, unfortunately, we cannot test this out right now. We coded the input here. We will continue coding this in the next video because I don't want to stall anymore. It will, I think already this video is about 15 minutes or so. And we still have a lot to code here into the MoveCat. So, fire here from awesometudes.com. I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to download the free assets and this complete whole project. Complete whole project. That I need to emphasize it's a complete and a whole project. Link is in the description below. I will see you guys in the next video.